interrupting anything? No, no. Come on in. Well, I just got here and I thought I'd uh, see you before I started my rounds. Oh, well, that's nice. And uh, good morning. It seemed a little strange when I got up this morning. Uh, I didn't find anybody there, both you and Laura gone. I felt a little uh, disoriented again. Yes, well, I, I knew that you'd had a rough night last night. Yeah, it was a long one, and it turned out rather depressing. Well, the young woman that I did the... Mrs. Rockwell, I did the bypass on. She went into shock, and I lost her. I'm sorry. I know you did everything possible. It's exactly what Monica said, but that doesn't seem to make much difference, does it? The worst part was having to tell her husband. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do. It's never easy, is it? And no matter how many times you have to do it, it never gets any easier. No, it doesn't. I guess there's no sense in dwelling on that. Look, I, I heard what happened to Bobby and then with Laura yesterday, and I'm sorry that I didn't get back to the house in time to talk to her about it. Well, uh, she seems to be handling it all right. And Scotty was there, which helped. Good. I'll find some time today to talk to her. Be nice. I'm sorry you had to hear it from Monica instead of me. Why? Well, I don't know. I just sort of feel it's my place to tell you. Leslie, you didn't see me like I told you on the phone. Monica wasn't going to say one word. I had to pull it out of her. Well, anyway, it's over. And uh, thankfully, Mr. Higgins was right there and saw what happened and didn't go blaming it on Laura's temper. Yeah, well, it is over. I just hope she realizes it can't happen again because he may not be so understanding the next time around. Yes, I know. Did you have a good sleep? Oh, I guess I did. Alice was uh, working on Thanksgiving dinner by the time I left. Yeah. I know. Uh, she did most of her shopping for it, in fact, yesterday. I'm oh, sorry, I can't get a little more enthusiastic. Um, just so that you know, I have invited Lee and Gail to join us, but they're not able to. Why not? Uh, because they're going to Steve's, so it'll just be uh, us and Scotty and Jeff and Heather. Leslie. It'll be a nice day, I promise you that. Well, it will certainly be a different one. I keep remembering last Thanksgiving when we just been married a couple of weeks and everything was so wonderful and new. It's like looking at everything through the wrong end of a telescope. It looks so far away. Leslie, don't feel that way, please. We're going through a bad period right now, but it will be new and wonderful and good again. I promise you that. But concentrate on what we still have between us and its ability to, to survive and to grow. I'm trying to. I was still awake last night when you came in. Were you? Mm-hmm. And I heard you stop outside the bedroom door. And then go on to the guest room. I have to be completely honest with you, young lady. You look ten times better now than you did when I left the apartment this morning. Well, I hope so. I was absolutely exhausted when I got home. I know you were. And a little bit distant. Was I? Yes, you was. <laughs> Took me a long time to get through to you. For a while there, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. I'm sorry. I just terribly worried about Rick. Why? Well, he lost a patient last night, but I've never seen him take it as hard as he did. Yeah. I can remember that feeling. It's something no doctor ever really gets used to. You do everything that medical science and your skills provide, and they die. It's a bitter experience. Anyway, thank you for being so understanding and so gentle in spite of my mood. Hey, it's all part of being married. Understanding each other's moods, helping each other through them. I'll always be there for you, Monica. That's something you can bank on. I do. More than you'll ever know. I just don't want to overdraw my account. No chance. You have unlimited funds. What's the matter? Have I said something wrong? No, no, of course you haven't. It's just I am still terribly worried about Rick. Monica, 
He'll get over it. We all do in time. It's not about, just about the loss of the patient. It's something else, Alan. It's, it's something that is eating away at him. I mean, look, this is a time in his, in his life right now where he should be happier than he's ever been. I mean, he's going to be head of the cardiac wing when it's finished. Instead, he is, he's quiet, he's withdrawn, he's brooding. He probably has a lot on his mind. Have you tried to talk to him about it? Yes, I've asked him straight out what was wrong. And he pretends there's nothing. But it doesn't fool me, because whatever it is, is partly, partly responsible for him taking things so hard last night. Well, my guess would be it has a great deal to do with his domestic situation. He's probably still trying to work things out at home with Leslie and Laura. Yeah, I suppose. But it isn't something that's going to resolve itself overnight, Monica. They've got a long uphill climb ahead of them, believe me. Rick spent the night in the guest room. I heard him come in. Whatever's wrong between him and Leslie must be getting worse. If anything happened to them, Judge Stallman could decide it would be better to send me away. That mustn't happen. Laura! Scotty, hello. Well, what are you doing here so early in the morning? Uh, it's not all that early. It's almost noon. Yep, yeah, but that's still early for you. I uh, know. We only had a half a day of school today before the Thanksgiving recess. Um, I decided I might as well come in and work. Oh, yeah. Well, I forgot all about that. So that means you got a nice long weekend, huh? Lots of homework to do over it, too. You know, I really appreciate your mother asking me over for Thanksgiving dinner. That was really nice of her. You are going to be able to make it, aren't you? <laughs> are you kidding? Now, I wouldn't miss that for the world. Oh, good. I'll enjoy having you there. Now, come on. Don't let anything bother you. I'll try, but it's not easy. Mrs. Hardy, would you excuse me for a minute? Yes, of course. Laura, there's uh, something that I have to tell you. Well, don't. Whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. Maybe not, but I have to say it anyway, so would you please just listen? this and I'm going to say it. Laura, I want you to know that I am very, very sorry if I said or did anything yesterday to upset you. I give you my word I didn't mean to. Bobby, stop it. I don't believe that for a minute and neither do you. It's true. I'm sorry. I just as soon drop the whole subject if you don't mind. But I do, my Laura, and I can't tell you how much it's been bothering me. I wish you'd try to forgive me. Scotty, uh, I have to go now. I, I uh, promised a patient on this floor that I'd get her a book from the school library that we don't stock here, and I want to deliver to her now. Look, Laura, before you go, would you at least have the kindness to accept my apology? I'll see you later. Bobby. Well, you can't say I didn't try. Look, Bobby, I think your timing was off, and I think you ought to just let it rest for a while, and if you can avoid Laura, then I think you should. It'd be better for both of you, okay? She could have at least been civil about it. Look. I suppose she told you that I said and did all kinds of awful things to her. No, she didn't. As a matter of fact, she didn't want to talk about it at all. All right, so let's just forget it, okay? Okay. I hope you have a nice Thanksgiving tomorrow, Scotty. Thank you. I hope you do too, Bobby. What kind of plans have you made? Oh, nothing very special. I decided to give up my day off so some of the nurses who have families could spend the day at home. That's good, but that's not going to be much fun for you. Well, maybe not, but I think it's fair. Jesse's working, too, and Dan said he'd take us out to dinner, so we'll probably go across the street or something. Well, whatever you end up doing, huh? have fun, okay? I'll see you. Thanks, Scotty. Well, I tried to make up with her, but she didn't want any part of it. She wouldn't even accept my apology. Yes, I know. I uh, couldn't help it over here, part of it. But I am very glad you made the gesture. Didn't get me very far. But I do think Scotty's advice is very sound. If I were you, I would avoid Laura altogether and avoid any further incidents between them. I don't guess there's much else I can do under the circumstances. <laughs> no. And I do think it's for the best. At least I feel better for having apologized. Well, good. 
Laura's been going through such a terrible time, and I certainly wouldn't want to make things worse for her than they already are. Well, see, I don't want you to read something in that isn't there. Now, I spent the night in the guest room because I didn't want to disturb you, and I thought for sure you'd be sleeping. Sleeping? Wonderful. I've been sleeping dozens of times before. You never slept in... Uh, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I'm sorry I mentioned it. No, no. No, look. I want to get it straight once and for all. There was nothing else to it. You haven't been sleeping well lately, and I thought you'd be worn out by what happened with Laura yesterday. Okay, fine. I was tired. Well, I guess I'd better make my rounds. Huh? Thanks for dropping in. See you later. Have a good day. You too. Leslie, I think we should concentrate on the good things that we still have between us. And there are many. The love and the respect we have for each other, I think they're at the top of the list, wouldn't you say? I don't minimize that. Not for one minute, I don't. Well, I hope you don't, because I want you to believe in that and in us. Rick, I am trying to think positively. I really want to. Cuz, I want you to because we're going to have a marvelous Thanksgiving because we're going to make it that way. Okay. Patients waiting out there for me. Uh, well, if any should drift in, I'm sitting here waiting. I'll occupy. Thank you. Quartermain calling. Gracie? Hello, sweetheart. I'm fine. I just wanted to call and let you know that I've decided not to come home for Thanksgiving, so I won't be seeing you after all. Yeah, I know it's a bore, but I have a little uh, project here at the moment that sort of takes uh, top priority right now. Besides, I don't think I could bear to listen to Mother asking Alan and Monica again when she can expect her next grandchild. It's like a very scratchy, very old recording. It sets my teeth on edge. No, I don't know for sure. I know that Monica thought she was pregnant last week. She went and saw a gynecologist here at the hospital. I did try to find out, Grace. I worked at it like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give up. You should know me better than that. But I think that I have managed to find a much safer way of finding out. 